Hello guys, this is Interesting Happy Chat again and tonight I will continue to read Focus the Power of Targeted Thinking Chapter 2. We have just finished uh, Chapter 1 so please stay with me and listen to what, what I will read. Okay, so Chapter 2, How to Focus on Your First Goals. In the previous chapter, you found out that the secret of getting massive results is to figure out the 20% of your work or your leisure time that gives you the greatest benefit and to spend more time doing that and less time doing the 80% of things that give you less value. Once you know what that vital 20% is, you can set goals that will speed you towards success. But if you've tried setting goals in the past, you may find these someone else's expectations is a fool's errand. Not least because if we do happen to fulfill them, they can be changed in an instant to something else that will keep us struggling. It's also better to be positive, so rather than having the goal of losing 10 pounds, it would be better to achieve a healthy rate of X. Otherwise, you will constantly have your mind on the negative. M stands for measurable. Once you have been specific, the way to measure whether or not you have reached the goal usually is implied. If it's about weight, you'll use the scales or your body fat monitor. If it's about money, your bank balance is, will, tell the, will tell the tale. In fact, whether or not you can measure it is a good test of whether you have been specific enough. If not, go back and adjust the goal. The next two goals, A and R, are for attainable and realistic. I'm not a big fan of emphasizing these too much. Goals need to be ambitious and glorious if they're going to motivate you to do the work necessary to reach them. And the most exciting goals tend to be the ones you're not 100% sure are. Sure are attainable and realistic. Can your book become a bestseller even though you've never written one before? Can you start a business that makes enough money within the next five years to allow you to stop working and devote yourself to your hobby or to charitable work? Well, lots of people have done those, and there's only one way to find out. Write a book or start the business and see what happens. The only real question is whether the sacrifices you are willing to make match the scope of the goal. If the answer is yes, go for it. If you give it your all and you're, you'll probably you'll probably get there. By the way, if you want to consult someone about whether to embark on your big plans, please ask someone who has done it, not someone. This is the one that destroys a lot of plants. 
business by February 15th. Then you do whatever you think will allow you to reach the goal by your deadline or target date. And if you're like most of us, quite often you fail. Either you actually gain weight or you stay the same. Or you lose some weight but don't reach the target. Or you don't get an agent by the end of September. And because of a problem with your website, your online business isn't actually ready to go in mid-February. You fail. And when we fail, we feel disappointed or depressed and we're likely to give up on the goal. Furthermore, we are a bit less likely to try to reach another goal in the future. These are two fatal weaknesses in this traditional approach to setting goals. First is setting the deadline. The self-development gurus would be aghast at that statement. They say that a goal without a deadline is just a wish. To that, I would say often a goal with a deadline is a prescription for failure. Here's why. When you set out to reach a goal, Generally, you don't yet know how you're going to do it. You may have some idea about the strategies you will use and the tasks you will do, but you can't know whether or how well it will work. Second flaw is that in many cases, reaching the goal requires the cooperation of other people. You can influence their responsiveness, but not control it. Therefore, how can you possibly set the time limit for success? A very nice question. There is only one true goal deadline. Above, I mentioned how the process usually goes. Here is how it should go. If you really want to achieve the goal, listen to these guys. First, you set the goal. For our example, we'll stick... We'll stick with reaching a target weight. Second, you do whatever you think will get you there. Let's say that you decide to walk a mile three times a week in order to burn up calories with the intention of losing one pound per week. Third, you monitor how well the process is working. If what you're doing gives you the results you want, say example you find your pound per week closer to your goal you just keep doing it until you reach your goal fourth if what you're doing isn't giving you the results you want you brainstorm alternatives and commit to doing something different this may just a small adjustment or it may be a total change or of, uh, of strategy for instance you will have some only fresh fruit asked 
whether they had been in goals. 30 years later, the 3% who said yes had earned more than the other 97% put together. The only problem is that the study never existed. No one is sure how the story got started. But there is no evidence that such a survey ever took place. However, many successful people do say they had written goals. This doesn't mean that you can set deadlines for tasks under your control within the goal. For example, if your goal is to find someone to design your website for your internet business, you can solve to research candidates and contact the top three by the end of the week. If your goal is to find an agent, you can write the three of them by tomorrow. If you decide to work out at the gym, you can set yourself the deadline of joining one by Monday. Grand goals are great, but break them into chunks. Grand goals pull you forward into the future you want for yourself. At the same time, it's important to break them down into smaller chunks that allow you to have a continual, continual feeling of progress and achievement. Don't put off celebrating until you reach the ultimate goal. Establish milestones and celebrate those as well. Planning is good, doing is better. The steps of the process require a little planning on your part, but beware of getting caught up in a fun of planning to the exclusion of actually taking action. If you love coming up with elaborate plans, diagrams, flowcharts, mind maps, etc., I know whereof I speak. Consider cutting back on the planning and putting more attention on achieving. By all means, use charts and other visual aids to help you focus on what you need to do. But make sure they're not a substitute for actually doing the tasks. In business, the two parts of the process are referred to as planning to work and working the plan. The fact that things are changing more quickly than ever also means that we have to flexible. These days, having a five-year plan that we consider set in stone is not realistic. You have to be ready to pay attention to people along the way that might point you in a better direction, either about where you're going or after. There's a good analogy for this in an experiment conducted in the field of art. The work of two sets of skilled art students was compared. The first set knew the outcome they wanted, planned it carefully, and moved forward it, toward it step by step with minimal changes. The second group had only a rough idea of what they were going for, and they changed their designs an average of 17 times. At the end, judges evaluated the two sets of paintings and found a second set to be more creative. The lesson is that leaving enough flexibility for variation and experimentation will give you better results. Your strategy for persistence. So far, so good. But there's a second hidden obstacle that you need to overcome. Often we commit to a strategy Say for example, working three times a week, and we do well keeping it up for the first week or even the first month. Then life gets in the way and we find that we're going only once a week or not at all. The outcome, failure. Every gym counts on this. In January, lots of people sign up for an annual membership. The effects of New Year's resolutions. But by March, most of the new members stop showing up. Great if you're the gym. Not so great if you're the member. We need not only strategy, not only a strategy for reaching a goal, we also need a strategy for making sure that we follow through with our own strategy. As I said above, the only way you can fail is if you stop. But often we do stop implementing the strategy. As soon as you notice that happening, you can implement Plan B. Okay, so you need to remember the only way you can fail 
is if you stop. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my reading bag at this point. And um, I will continue next time with the plan B. Page 22. Okay, so for those who for those who are new to my channel, uh, I am interested in happy chat again, and this is one of my happy. I'm just sharing my uh, happy to you, and uh, if you want to if you want to suggest more uh, or if I have uh, a lot of mistakes pronouncing the words, reading reading the. Phrases, or sentences, or not posting on uh, some some parts. You may also comment down below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and also uh, tap the notification bell. So when I uh, downloaded or uploaded new videos, you'll get notified. Thank you for listening again, and I want to thank all of the people or my viewers and my subscribers and all of my members my, my uh, the members of my channel my supporters thank you so much Timore and uh, Kapatid M. Rose Vlogs Kapatid Flip Rocks and for those who always com uh, comment on my comment section um, also to uh, uh, solid supporters of uh, Kapatid Dick's Adventure Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat and um, I love you all. Uh, God bless you all and bye!